Hi guys, welcome to this video. We are doing a little video about our track Foundations with Martin Mephius, and it's for his Particle Series. He's done insights on his Particle Series video. So this is our part of it. We also do more in-depth tutorials on our Patreon producer tier if you want to check it out. We are quite excited about that. And today we're going to talk a little bit about this track Foundations, how it came together, and we're going to play you some different versions and some inspirations. Yes. And uh, talk through it. Yeah. Yeah. Also, go into the project quickly with a little technical view of the final version of the project, which is open in Cubase here. Yeah. Um, maybe you've heard um, me and Martin speak about this song on the Spotify uh, commentary edition, where he spoke about half an for about half an hour about how the song came together. It was a really convoluted back and forth uh, uh, kind of process which started actually four and a half years ago which is pretty crazy if you ask me yeah um, it, it's very typical of us to leave a track on the shelf for a while but this one is uh, is pretty crazy we yeah. we I think we had a, a love affair with it for a month or maybe two I've I yeah I always love the track it's it's in all the DJ sets as well like it's if you go back to 2017 noisy on Glastonbury in that epic fire spider the track is in there as a idea idea yeah um so yeah yeah but somehow we didn't get to finishing it and it sounded a little bit weird I remember that the studio sessions we had uh, here in the studio kind of started with me and Martin doing like. Uh, testing out different sidechain combinations and drum sounds and it was quite technical and we started oh, yeah, two things started like which compressor does the quick like yeah. it wasn't even about what sounds good no, but what no. is the quickest it we was were, just yeah. a shootout yeah yeah we, shootout. we did a shootout and then we were making drum sounds and then he brought a bunch of drum sounds and his drum sounds were in the original demo of this but yeah it like two things came out of that and uh, then we got an idea down here and then it went to Tyson studio and there was more work done there. And that's yeah. when it got the title, get yourself a sub bro. Because, because it was in B and I refused to change it because it sounded nice in my studio. So I think it's good if we just go to that, uh, play the old version that th this is also the version that's in the, uh, Arcadia, uh, Noisy Glastonbury. Yeah. 2017 set. And here there's a bunch of versions. We just put them all in one folder. We're not going to play all of them, but just to give you an idea of, you know, the process we go through. Yeah. So this is uh, filtered stabs, monotony, building. Thing we've been exploring more. It's also in uh, Deep Down with Face and Halcyon with the upbeats. I'm going to play later uh, one of the inspirations for that. Yeah. And then from here on, it it really follows the old song. Yeah. Um, it's really the drums that got such an upgrade that made the whole tune breathe more and, fu and funk more. Yeah, I think that's the that's a big jump. But this is the the, the whole layout with the second build up happening here. Yeah. We didn't we didn't really feel the need to change any of that when we upgraded. It was like, no, that is nice. Yeah, the the main things that ended up changing is the the drums and the the, the riff, the little stab riff got became like an alternating thing instead of a one a one bar or two bar loop. Shall we just play the the last one? Yeah, in quickly? Cubase. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, a little reverse thing. Yeah, more space. Oh yeah, we have a version with actual holes where we try, yeah. like, Noisia, I think we are really bad at leaving holes. Like, we always love on that Noisia Radio, those chain, those tunes that have bass and then, Nothing. like, two bars of drums, we're like, yes! And then we try it ourselves and we always end up filling it. Yeah, but this did work out here. This is one of the tracks where we actually did that and maybe we reined it back in a little because here it has a reverse sound exactly. in the hole. But yeah. I did make a hole yeah. initially and we talked about it. You know, you leave each other WhatsApp notes and voice notes saying, well, how do you feel about this version? Well, maybe that hole is a little too big and needs to be more exciting on the drop, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. A lot of back and forth, but 
in the end this does have a bit more space and the drums are more natural sounding and a lot more i don't know just don't dominate so much yeah. but then yeah here like this is that breakdown really nothing changed because no. nothing had to be changed this was all fine it was just the sound like the the mix and the drum sound design that was not not so i don't know it was a bit well it's very very much of that time to do have these very maximal drum transients that come yeah. sit across the entire spectrum it just if you yeah it, play them again quickly it's like just really loud clicks on top of a song yeah but that was very much the thing to do like for some reason people were just experimenting with that and yeah that was the, the thing but i'm really glad we got rid of that because it, it really like the new vibe and that's actually kind of rare that you upgrade the vibe later on the process yeah. like four years later that very. you managed to get the vibe to be vibier usually you just ruin it usually yeah. that this would be the later version exactly yeah we've got me like more going punch. in like we need more power in the mix <laughs> yeah. and ruining the song but it's now actually, it's, it's it's like reversed taken back yeah yeah these like the drums have such a nice natural kind of uh, swing feel to them which is like it's that is very rare that you get a fully finished song where you can just put a new drums in and they sound in place yeah. more than the other ones so i wanted to do a little uh youtube haul um showing where we come from three tracks that are super important for us uh, for noise yeah we have all of these on vinyl and we we do like sessions with the three of us kind of playing the uh, all the vinyl that uh that we had remember that in martin's room on shitty vest axe decks yeah we have some cool photos of that yeah these would the, these we would just mix endlessly with one another yeah did we actually have Sonic and Silver Rocket Launcher on vinyl? Yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure we That's did. That's also a big inspiration for the kind of like housey, stabby, monotonous, but growing uh, build Filter up. house build-ups, yeah. yeah. This is pretty quiet, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's skip through it. It's, it's about the stab thing. No, that's before. I think it comes now, yeah. I'm playing this song in my sets again. Funnily, I'm always mixing it with a Mephius song, the sinkhole. Because uh. it's a nice key match and sinkhole is really quiet. Wait. This this is the part, that's the part what it's about, yeah. Because it's very clever to have a fully mixable intro drop and then make sure that people will always end up playing this section where it drops yeah. out to the stabs. But you know where this is from, right? It is completely sampled. Yeah. The whole thing is sampled. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, good sample. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> like, good culture. Well done, just like Daft Punk. Good, good creative, good creativity nonetheless. Yeah. So, I was going through our own songs that use these bills. I, I listened back to Noisy and TV Shower for an hour, and it's, ah, oh, I couldn't stand hearing it. It's so pushed. I don't know if that's like that's why I selected this one as an example. I could have selected one of our own ones. We've been doing this always, but yeah, the earlier ones are they don't sound so great. Shower for an hour. All right, yeah. Really I, I, I I listen to Moon Palace still quite often and that's it still that's, sounds pretty nice. Yeah. But that doesn't have this housey built that the foundation yeah, yeah. has. Um obviously Carrier if you don't know this song we played a couple times already uh, when we do like our history on Nausea Radio or our guest mixes. It's always this song is always a feature. And you can tell like stab on the one. Yeah. Rolling. Two bar groove with bass. Stab on the one. Yeah. This was Recipe such... for or like fit 20 Noisia songs. Yeah. But right. that's all this song needs to be. This It's just a two-bar loop that... I mean, the way the percussion comes in and out, that's great, but it's all about just that basic groove. Yeah, yeah and they have a little uh, bass layer with some more transients, and then they filter it off, and you just get this up. Yeah. Instead of this. I think it's Oh, no, that's percussion. percussion. Uh, no. It is... 
No, it's further back, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's the distortion layer. It's so yeah. subtle. And then Gridlock really blew that up in his remix. Yeah. Also a really great remix. But yeah, this tune for us, like every time when we were we would still buy tickets to parties, we would ask like the DJ to play this one. Play Carrier! Um, such a tune, everyone was playing this. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think it's pretty obvious, like how that how that uh, affects does this, this. Does this shortcut work? Yes, it works. Oh, what the no? Huh? What what the huh? fuck? <laughs> What's happening? I guess it doesn't work. <laughs> While playing back, it works. So yeah, stab Damn. on the one. And descending bass notes. Yeah. Also, a lot of the sound design in this song is really reminiscent of Cause for Concern. The yeah. bam, 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 bam is very uh, octave. Phasery. Piece. Yeah. And I think one of the things that we never really pulled off well, which is great about Carrier, is the kick drum placement. There's something about the kick drum placement of Carrier where the kick is on two offset points in the middle of the bar and the bass just kind of echoes around it and the yeah. way that sits very subtly is why the track grooves so much and we've tried in lots of songs to oh, do yeah. those kicks and it usually just sounds way too abrasive yeah. but in this song for some reason it's magically aligned even though it's a pretty crude kick like it's yeah. quite a fridge door kick like it's a pretty yeah it's but you i mean just you... need need a song that does almost nothing else for me to really Put appreciate the, the, that yeah put, like like nail this drum pattern but yeah it's been in so many tracks that we did and then we delete it later like no that's too dominant yeah. it doesn't sit with the groove um is it in uh subdue no that's just one of the kicks yeah yeah, yeah. no it's in uh, exorcism but oh, yeah. that's the whole song is very ag aggressive and yeah shall we dial it in listen yeah, to some sure. old noise here yeah from the block control EP, no? Yeah. This one sounds horrendous. <laughs> wow, nice artwork. I mean, the groove does work. Yeah. Actually, the kick is kind of similar to Carrier. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Back the when we were, break. When we thought a fat snare was like 15 snares <laughs> on top of each other. Because that's what people... Like if you listen back to a lot of two th early two thousand era uh, drum and bass, that's what people were doing to make the snare fatter is layer more of them. Yep. Thank God we're if we've moved moved past that uh, technically. Like my favorite, yeah, but my favorite song from that era is the Medicine remix by Matrix, which is obviously just one snare. Yeah, but that's also a little bit earlier. That's yeah. like then the layering came, and and now we're in synthetic world, and I think. It's high time that we re go back to kind of real yeah. drums again. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's what I was so excited about. Also, yeah, I said this in the in the foundations commentary edition. I was very happy because Nick made these new drums and then he let me put reverb on them. <laughs> and Nick gave me a T-shirt for my for my birthday last year that says "Needs more reverb" <laughs> because I put too much reverb on everything, and we both know it. But I came in, I was like, yeah, these are great. Can I put reverb on them <laughs> to make them sound more real? Like just a little, just to put them in a space. And we both agree that it's better with a bit of reverb. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was very, very happy about that. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I wanted to show this track, which is another one of like the three of us, like our, our very favorites. Um, because of the dr the way the drums sit in the mix and the way the drums roll, I can't turn it up because then we get bleed. So I really want to <laughs> turn really it up, play yeah. this loud. It's like it's it's not the same drum pattern. It's just something that I wanted to play. Like hey, actually, the drum pattern is quite similar to the original demo of uh, Sub Bro, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. I think so. With but anyway, the space. 
Yeah, and the really weird funk bass line that mo- plays yeah. a ton of notes and descends once again. Yeah, you should, you should. I mean, we've pointed it out many times, but you should listen to this track. Now, right now, we're just talking about foundations and we're talking over it, but this bass line and this track is magic. But yeah, like this is not a class on Matrix and Fierce tightrope on Metro Recordings, which is Matrix's label. Did you know <laughs> Matrix is Optical's brother? Yeah. And his brother, their other the third brother, made this artwork. The Plain Clothesman. Which is still, I think, my favorite vinyl single ever. And this is my favorite uh, side of it. And I think... It's, it's a says, mislabel, right? It says here, so it's to my per- first side on my favorite drum and bass. Oh, it's Eric B. Yeah, we know this Shout guy out too. to Eric B. Yeah. So, yeah, a little... Just go go in and, and oh, well, wait. Wait, to I want to know. Songs. I want to know if this has the, the kicks on eight and twelve. No, it doesn't. But no, it does have. But it does have the kick on twelve. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't have the eight kick. But it also has the ghost. Yeah. But this is a uh, Ebony Jam break, I think. Yeah. With, with a unison. I think Emu Unison on a. On an Ebony Jam break, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's go back to the final release version. Just doing the same thing. Yeah. That we- <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> but right. it sounds better. I think this one hopefully will also stand the test of time a little bit better. Because this mix down isn't maximally pushed. It's pretty loud, but it's not crazy. It's not trying to make a point of being extremely loud. Uh, where are the new drums? Here, in the folder called New Drums. Let's see where... No, I'm trying to find this... Drum uh, reverb. Drum reverb. <laughs> this is you... really subtle. I don't think you can solo it like this. You can mute it. Uh... Oh, that's... Then it inc- the inc- includes another layer that's supposed to be muted. All right, great tutorial, guys. <laughs> Some grandpa style <laughs> Cubase <laughs> navigating Cubase 101. Yeah, it's very subtle. Yeah, again, I can't turn up the volume, but I think if you guys listen to it at home, turn it up, you can hear the difference between with reverb and without. But yeah, we have to keep the speakers low, so I really cannot tell the difference. So, apart from the drums, let's get into some of the sounds and how they were made just briefly. Uh, let's just go chronologically. Um, with Hey guys, if you're into this uh, noisia showing how they work, <laughs> we do have a Patreon program where uh, we do, t- uh, do tutorials about... Uh, we're opening up a little bit. Yeah, um, about how we're doing. And speaking of which, I am going to do a tutorial about these types of drum sounds because there is something that has been brewing in my head and clicked recently that is to do with a concept called intermodality and I really want to do a full tutorial about it. So I'm not going to go in depth here, but I will in another tutorial. But you will have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... um these filter stabs, they're really nothing special. It's all about the tone of them, so the, the the chord, basically. Let's see what they're made of. What is this? That's a kick. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a kick. Uh, this is just a little tiny noise that does add a, a, a vibe. I remember reviewing it. It's those things in the bottom here. Yeah, and this is the, this is the, the main stab filtered. Yeah. So what is this? This is just a stab with an EQ on it. Great. What's, what's That's the, very what's insightful. What's the file name? It's probably a bounce. Weirdo stab. Stab. So we made it. We all, we already bounced it. Yeah. That's not. So here are some, here are the layers. This is the main thing. That is a, a sample. <laughs> yeah. Ligeti. Yeah. This is pros. This is when I was I I like do batch processing and I just process. Lots of like this is both classical music actually, uh, but like ran through so many effects that it actually has nothing to do with the original uh, anymore. Yeah. Wow, that is completely out of tune. But it yeah, adds. That's the that's the tension yeah. that you're constantly building. 
But yeah, these are three. Uh, so this would have happened in my studio. So it started here with uh, Nick and Martin, and maybe I was sitting in, but the, it was a bit too techy for me. I'm like, okay, you guys are going to do this. And then we took the project to my room, and we found out it was in B, key of B. We left it in B. We called it Get Yourself a Sub Bro, and we started adding these kind of curb crawlery, uh, repetitive stab, uh, rhythmic stabs. What is this? An effect sound. Yeah, it sounds like something I can't hear right now because it sounds too quiet. So this is called Voctrone. I don't really know why because it's not a vocal, but... Does it have stuff on there? What's, uh, what's, the what's the LFO tool? It's really good that I have to look around the <laughs> camera. Oh, this, uh, is, this is doing the filtering. Yeah. So it's pretty basic. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, like I said, it's all about the tone and having the, the right amount of harmonics that you can filter and that you don't have a huge spike in the song, so in the sound somewhere that if the filter goes across it, suddenly the level spikes up. I mean, you can do that and compress it, of course, but this, it's, it's nice to have this very broadly, broad chord basically and, and filter it because. So this intro for our, I think for our intro, like normal yeah. standards, it's really like. Super minimal. It's like, no, let's have that sound and filter it in. That's, yeah, that's, that's enough. The whole thing. Yeah. So we really made a roller uh, yeah. today. Yeah. It's like, we're, we're not pretending to make uh, a story or whatever. No, this is a nice roller yeah. in our cherished traditions of really nice rollers. This looks like it's a, one of Martin's editions because when we picked the project back up in 2020, he also had been trying different things out and sent little bits over to yeah. add to the project. Actually, actually, let's let's call. Oh yeah, Martin. let's call him. I have a question for him. There's a mystery about this song that we never solved. I think we should ask him. Okay, he will ask. I hope he picks up. Hello, der Martin. Give me a second, hang on. Yeah, yeah. What? Where are you at? <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, in the parents' house, I just had a little um, bank holiday lunch thing. Nice. So family's here. It's all good. What are you up to, man? What do you say? We are shooting the Foundations uh, tutorial. Oh, sweet. Yes. You're, you're with Nick at the moment? Yeah. We're, yes. We're in his room. Cool. Yes. Yeah, we had a, nice we had a question... Hello. We had a question because we yeah. forgot. Um, what program did we use to write it? Like, what <laughs> DAW did we use? Do you remember? <laughs> I guess it was Cuban, wasn't it? Oh, oh right, shit. of course. <laughs> of course, how could we forget? All right, thanks, man. <laughs> thanks, man, I appreciate it. Have fun with the family. Right. Bye. Thanks, man, appreciate yeah. it. Bye. <laughs> oh. Right. Wow. So, so it was Cubase. Go Just ahead. a little lighthearted humor. Yeah. <clears throat> so where were we? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So these these weirdo phase ref that all came. Uh, that's new stuff that happened in the like underneath in the bottom half of the screen now. That those can I have the mic? Yeah. We, this is all like what we started doing uh, this year. Yeah. I think this wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. 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 That's and that's that very is much such the, a carrier. Yeah, thing. that's totally carrier. But we were like, it's also why we call it foundations. It's like let's make it actually about the songs that we love, so we get to copy them. And I, we have an ex conceptual excuse to copy. Uh, yeah, because carrier. it's more or less a you know a, also an homage. Homage. Um, yeah. So these sounds are just phasey, strange. I think uh, strange convolution models. And then revert on the on the stab, and then reversed, and put some funky effects on them, and they became cool. And that's yeah, that's a. Is the is that dun 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 dun? That's one. It's two patches. Yeah, it's yeah. So this so is the just, main the main stab just filters in and plays throughout. So that goes. Uh, can you mute the effects? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, I think what happened is we had the sub, and then we just copied the sub to make harmonics on top, and we just didn't do much more you, than just a ton of plugins. Sub? So this is the sub. 
Wow. Right. High science. And this is, yeah, let's let's have a little look so at... So what does the pitch? How, how is the pitch? It's the frequency change? shifter. So if you get rid of this... Huh? It's actually, still overtones. Yeah. It's trash in the probably a brick wall high pass filter in Pro QT. I think it's the the feedback on the comb. Actually, put the comb on. It, it, well, it's mostly that. It's mostly the frequency shifter and trash. Mm. Trash seems to add a ton of high end. Oh yeah, it's multi banded. Interesting wave shaping going on. Interesting. This looks like it could have been Martin's work. These curves over here. Yep. Traces of Martin. <laughs> SDR. Oh, wow. Cool plugin. I now use Fattern, uh, FabFilter Saturn 2 for this. It does this. Same thing that SDRR does. Yeah. So this is some saturation, but I think no, it's also it's subtle. very subtle. And there's and more the, saturator. Can you mute the send? A little EQ. Huh? That's the compressor on it. Oh, so right. the send is coming off the main stab group, I think. Is there a main stab group? There's probably a main stab group. Or is there no? Oh. <laughs> so, uh, then this was the original stab, and for the updated 2020 version, I tried to make an alternating stab. It was pretty much the same, but with some different plugins on it. Let's experiment. <laughs> So this is pretty similar, but it somehow has a um, has a tone to it. I'm not sure how I did that. I think the comb is acting slightly different and has the comb has slightly different resonances moving, which gives it this strange tone. But it was, you know, it's more or less a happy accident. It's not much more than just per pressing all the buttons and until it sounds cool. So, and there's a simple bass here. So that's what we're talking about. B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the track is, the, so the track is in B, but we're not really playing the B on the ones, just to, you know, the, it is being played, but it's not the main note. Um, so just so that the whole track doesn't sound really weird. If you'd only play B underneath, it would obviously sound like it's wrong, but it's moving so that you have some uh, some concept of tonality uh, yeah. so and some dynamic. If you want to move from, from the key of E to F sharp in mixing, the B would be in the circle of fifth in between, uh, which is also nice to have like that unusual song in B that you can use for, to pivot from uh, E to F sharp. Yeah. If you do uh, uh, mixing key, this this synth is interesting because it's really weird, but it's one of my favorite sounds from the track. It's a, a it's playing a third, I think. Yeah, so it's a it's a little chord. It's very much just it's rhythmically placed very carefully. It's, it's yeah. in a weird spot, but it works. So yeah, this is the serum patch. It says Mef Bass 24 step, so I think he probably made it. <laughs> but I, I do remember messing with this, and I do remember playing the double notes. Um, so uh, it was a collaborative effort. There's a lot of stuff on here. Um, so it is a bass sound, but we're using it in the mid-range. And I think, yeah, it has a really cool kind of sucking effect. And what happens here? Right. So there's a bunch of there's a bunch of different bases that I, uh, that I added later too that are basically kind of slinky and I wanted to use them earlier but didn't end up working in the arrangement so they're only here for eight bars. Um, but that's these guys. That one. That's the, uh, the stop. There is is our favorite. Uh, it's really strange. The stop on the snare is my favorite new moment that happens at 57. 
Yeah, because so I, I just closed the filter there. I thought it was cool to sort yeah. of... Uh, yeah, no, but when me and Martin heard that, we were like, that is genius. That is such a weird moment <laughs> on the second snare of the, yeah, of, yeah. The, of the second eight. It's such a weird moment. It's great. Uh, and here, what else changes here? These little sounds come oh, yeah. in. This is an addition of Martin from later on to make it more intense. And there's some little, little filtery bits there, and the break has a little open hat section coming in. And then, yeah, this has this really dead sub note too. So it has all these strange accents, and and it is obviously a real challenge very late in the game to try and make all this stuff sound natural because you're so used to all the sounds and. Dosing them and creating the right timing for everything and making the phrases work is really what makes a track like this uh, work or fail. Um, because it's very easy, obviously, uh, you all, everybody knows, to, it's easy to fill up the bar with notes and it's easy to just try to make everything exciting. And so here was a real challenge to try and create these stops in this space and uh, the right pacing with all the sounds and not try to show off a million sounds too quickly. Yeah. Exercise in restraint, which is what funk is all about. Yeah, and then this build, which is a heavier version of the first build, really. Also, like no big moment in that yeah. build. It just goes build, 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 and it goes into it without like a. <gasps> yeah, and, it, and 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 the ele some elements keep going. It's not like a big cut. It's a, and it's a you know it's a hot pants break, right? It's not just yeah. a. Oh, that's one of our breaks, and then this is probably the hot pants. Very simple, and and what's really surprising to me about this part of the song is that when all the techie elements come back in over the top. There's no disconnect. Normally, if you take these more old sounding, you know, excuse the word, elements like the hot pants break and filtering stuff and, and then go into more m modern production, it either, it makes one or the other sound off. It accentuates the contrast. And here, for some reason, it blends in quite nicely with the rest of the song. And that's something that I hadn't expected because when I was working on the drums for the first section, I was making the drums to the drop to the first drop, and I got them sounding nice, and then I transported them to the second drop, which is a totally different situation, uh, you know, in terms of the sound set happening, and the fact that they also work Doesn't there was just a surprise. A is that the other bass line still in there that goes do 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 on the second drop? I, I, don't even, I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a new bass line. Yeah, but do, I mean, do, I, do. It's, it changed the sound a little bit, but it, that's the different notes, yeah. But that's a pl it's not entirely new because it's already happening in the last 16 as well. There's a, a kind of... Ah, oh, right. It's not oh, the yeah. same. Also here you get the low B. And then there's a cool outro. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Obviously just pitched down, but it's fucking amazing. Well, yeah, it's, uh, you know, a track like this and a lot of funk stuff that is funky and, and exciting is also about um, having the balls to fall in love with something that has a lot of errors or that is just weird and strange and having the guts to go with that one sound. Yeah. And a lot of tutorials and production stuff will actually steer you away from those decisions because they will judge things by all these qualities and be like, this sounds good if you do that, this yeah. is how you build that synth. And a lot of this stuff, the cool shit happens when you kind of go against that a little yeah. bit. So yeah, a lot of sound design kind of ends up as all, as close to white noise as p possible because the white noise is the loudest, but like that's not how you get character. Yeah, It's also really not how you get funk. I think funk is really defined by negative space, like by the spaces in between and the sounds 
you don't use and the space that you don't fill in. But that is that is hard. Like you really need to know what you're doing when you're leaving stuff empty. Yeah, and, and, and also the, like, going in, for example, I remember with these sounds, I almost overdid the funk. Like, this is almost too much in this song. Oh, and there were, they were way more prominent as well. It's not like when we build tracks, we don't make the mistake of filling it up. But it is, it is, it's also important to try, like, is it better if it's fuller? But then yeah. it's, like, if you can, like, catch yourself doing that and then think, like, hey, no, it's cooler. And also, it will stand out more and people will remember it more if it isn't another white noise completely maximalized track. Yeah. But you have to try always if it's better. I, I, I think what I <coughs> tried to do here <coughs> is maximize the funk part and harmonize this bass with a bunch of seventh chords. Um, so this... Uh, it's it's, nice it's ve ve very subtle, but this is, a, you know... Um, this is these are seventh chords on top of just trying to be really funky and everything. See what it's doing now. Oh, that is pretty funky. Uh, but you don't hear any of that back. It's just a ton of harmonics basically being filtered. It just sounds like white noise to me now. Yeah, it's like it's, tuned tuned noise. It's kind of. It's oh, all very subtle. Love that. Love the overtone. So. Is it, but it is, this was almost too much. I now know, like, it's funny because going into it being like, yeah, this song's super funky and has to be kind of minimal and these sounds have to be kind of slinky and naughty and stuff. So I'm going to go in and make a sound that is super like that. And that sound is th that, but it is almost too much. So, it, it, yeah, it was a very interesting process making new sounds for this because with bass sounds, especially like he's saying, it's very easy to just get caught up in like making it big and loud and, and, and just going with you know, maximizing it all. And this was a very different process. So I think apart from the drums, I mean, they are quite simple in terms of their buildup. So the snare is still an, an instrument. It's not a wave. Yeah. And this actually is kick two is kick two. And it's not a sample playing in kick two. It's, it's, it's a, and I want to get into this in another tutorial because there's quite a long story to this. But yeah, this is not an acoustic snare. Can you, can you play it like velocity map? No, it's... So how did you do the, the ghost snares? They're processed the, versions. They're, they're, they're a yeah, sl it's slightly different version. Right. Oh, this... Wait, with these ghosts... Yeah, it's just an, a slightly different... Yeah. It's also, uh, also a, a kick too. And the, the kick as well is kick too. Um, there's a little hat on the kick. Very important. See, that's pretty synthetic. There's sounds still sounds pretty synthetic. And this that's pretty important. That big open hi hat sitting on top of the stab. Some hats. This is from the original Ranger. This is original layers. Pretty basic. And then this is a mess. There's like side chaining going on, different types of side chaining. There's um, uh, inverse uh, off inverse ring mod happening. There's a bunch of verbs, verb send, SC verb, drum send, drum reverb. It, like it, it because of all the different stages, it just becomes a huge mess. So I'm not gonna try and untangle uh, that. But yeah. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how this track came together. We obviously can't speak for Martin, but we did put a tennis ball here that you could think of as him. Um, but he's probably a lot happier than the tennis ball. Maybe he's more like that guy. But uh, yeah, it was uh, really cool. And it was great to also uh, add to the Particle series. And it was really cool to see Martin's surprise that we had picked the song up again because... He had already done a bunch of, you know, he he up uh, he like revamped the the MP3 or the WAV file a little bit to play out and enhanced it a little bit and yep. tried a bunch of different angles on it. And um, at some point, I was just like, well, I just hate the drums. The rest is great. I'm gonna try new drums. And then yeah. from that, it snowballed into becoming a part of the Particle series, and that was really cool to yep. add. Yeah, bring it home on Vision with our own. Uh 
with our own contribution to the series, that was also nice. Yeah. And it was cool to do the artwork uh, and try to write when it started uh, with uh, Corona and everything. That's when the uh, we were working on the artwork. And I remember, you know, t telling the, the illustrator that we wanted something that was just a little bit more positive and had some you know a more positive message so that's why we went with the tree and the foundation and that's you know the reference Roots. to to uh cause for concern mr optive and our foundations and that's why the tree is blossoming and that's you know the result of these roots and that's the result of all this music that we have played you of the people that came before us so that was a really cool way to pay homage to that and we are happy that we were able to do that yes so yeah thank you martin uh, for working on the tune with us and uh, having us as a guest in the Particle series. And yeah, as Nick mentioned before, we do more of these on our own Patreon. So if you are interested to see more insights, we do have those available. Cool. So, thank you. That wraps it up. Um, catch you guys next time, hopefully. Peace out to Martin. Big up. Later. Ciao.